do. Oh, hold on. That's going to have to hold on, Jalen, because we have Miss Pinna. Let's welcome her. Hey, Fallon. How are you, gorgeous? You look beautiful. Sorry, guys. It's been real over here trying to get these technical difficulties. <laughs> you look absolutely beautiful. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So, Fallon. I've been dying to do a reading on you. And now that I have you in my clutches, um, I'm going to do something. <laughs> yes, right? I'm going to do something just so everybody knows. Fallon has already had a twin flame reading. The lady she did a reading with, super, super talented reader. Um, I'm not trying to do a twin flame. I don't want anything in relationships. Like I was explaining to you guys earlier, right? We know Fallon as an ex. We know her as a current partner. We know her as a mother. We know her as a vessel. I want to actually see what Fallon's energy as herself, as um, as her own woman, where her energy is, where it's going, and literally what's on the future for her. Okay? So this is just going to be focused only on uh, Fallon, you know? Only on Fallon. So Fallon, I'm going to do kind of a general reading on you. Is there anything that you kind of wanted to focus on? Um, any questions you have? Or do you just want to drop the cards and see where it goes? No, let's just drop it like it's hot. I'm, I'm, a, um, I'm a very open person. I'm an open book. I have uh, nothing to hide. So let's go. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's cut these cards. All good things come in threes. And let's see where we go. All right. So cards are already falling, which is, let's say something about you being an open book, because I swear most Tauruses, the cards, like, just stay there. Taurus and Scorpios, you're just like, are any cards going to fall? And they're just like, nope, not today. You maybe get one or two cards. Okay. We also have the cups. Ooh, we have the five of cups. We have the nine of swords. We have the world. Let's get a few more cards out. And also, you know my communication style. We had a re we had an interview uh, a while back. I'm a blabbermouth, so feel free to interrupt me, over talk me. I grew up in a big family. You're a boy mom, so you know. You know no, what it is. <laughs> you know what it is. We also have the ten of swords. We have the sun, and we have the justice card. Let's start with these cards. And then, yes, we have justice. Let's start with these cards and then we can always, always, always uh, go back in. Listen, Fallon, right now what's going on is you do have that big world energy, right? Let's start with the major arcana. You have that world energy, you have justice and you have the sun. This is actually really interesting in the fact of what the world is saying and everybody knows your life. So this is not anything groundbreaking, right? But the world energy is saying that you have literally just finished a karmic lesson. You have finished a karmic lesson and the world, it's time for you to level up. What does that mean? The best analogy I can make is, you know, the world never wants to break us. What it does is it kind of fattens us up like prize fighters. So we have the energy and the capability to go and learn our lessons. And once you learn the lesson, it literally just elevates you, fattens you up even more because you're about to get into big lessons. The world is saying that you just literally had your butt handed to you, but now it's time for your blessings to come in. However, before those blessings come and they wrap everything up with a bow, there's one lesson that you've internalized in your head, but in your heart, you really, really haven't accepted. This is actually what the world wants you to focus on. This is what right now you might feel like there's not a little block, but you might feel like, I don't know, things just aren't sinking right. This could be one of the reasons. Now, what is that reason? Well, we have a couple of heavy swords. We have the 10 of swords, we have the nine of swords, and you have the eight of swords. Now, I will say that the swords do represent air signs, right? <laughs> Take that for what it is, right? But when you look at the swords, this is actually really interesting. The Nine of Swords said that to a certain point, you do feel a lot of pain and sadness still because something that you hoped um, was something beautiful and special, something that at one point felt like a dream. You saw something, you heard something, the universe came and just knocked the rose colored glasses off your face. And you realized that reality was almost like a nightmare. It's like being in a situation where you're like, okay, this sucks, this and that, but you know what? Some days are gonna be better than others, but let me just work, work, work with your uh, Taurus sensibilities. Let me work 
and I can make it what I want to. That's your earth Taurus sensibilities. But you woke up and you realized that the these times that you thought were like horrible and you wanted to do better, that was the best it was ever going to be. So you had that. And when it comes to an earth sign, this can be very devastating with earth signs because I'll say this all about all earth signs, but especially Taurus, you have no problem sacrificing your blood, your sweat, your tears. But one thing I can say about an earth sign, you guys expect to get some type of return. You'll sacrifice everything, but you expect it to come back because you look at reaping what you sow, you toil the earth and you plant. It really is heartbreaking when you realize that what you expected to get back is not actually going to come back. Now, why is that, okay? You're also dealing, and I know everybody thinks that this could be talking about your past relationship, but this is going into even family relationships. This is going into friendship relationships. Um, and obviously it could relate to old love relationships, but there is that 10 of swords. The 10 of swords is literally where you were stabbed in the back so many times. And each time you felt that stab in your back, right? The When you asked, Al, why did you stab me? It was always something that you did, right? You talked too loud. Al, why did you stab me? You weren't talking loud enough. Al, why'd you stab me now? Because I need you to sing now. It was always something. Every time you felt like people mistreated you, every time you felt like they hurt you, it always went back to being your fault. The thing is that you're dealing with this with, right? That you're dealing with this with the eight of, um, with the eight of swords is i'm sorry with the uh, ten of swords is the fact that the way you reacted still causes you a lot of um, internal shame the way you reacted was kind of to lay down in your own blood and be like okay 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 so i'll talk quieter and i'll learn to sing and i'll do this and i'll that because you somehow thought that this was a symptom you thought this was a symptom of what was going on right and so every single time you thought that if you just gave them what they wanted, or if you were just more agreeable, that somehow it would stop. We'll come back to the 10 of swords, right? We'll come back to the 10 of swords. Well, actually let's get into it because the thing that one of the lessons that the universe needs you to learn about the 10 of swords is, you know, you're thinking that they did this because this was a symptom of their whatever. The universe actually wants you to know Fallon, you still with us? Oh, this universe actually wants us to know that it's not a symptom of what they did. You don't realize that there are people in your life that go out their way to make you feel bad, that go out of their way to get in your head, to go out your way to blame you for being cold or not helping enough or not doing anything. But the reason to blame you for your outbursts, blame you for the way that you talk to them. And they always have an excuse, but you don't realize that them stabbing you in the back and them hurting you, it's not really, how do I say this? It's not a symptom. It's their actual goal because the more they can hurt you and the more they can make you scream out and the more they can make you engage with them about what they're doing, the less they have to focus on their own life, the less they have to focus on where they fall short, the less they have to focus on their own demons and the things that wake them up at night and the things that they're worried about. But what do they do? They find the perfect distraction. Through your screams of pain is their distraction for the misery that actually is their life. So this is something to keep in mind. We're gonna circle back to that, right? And we have the Eight of Swords finally topping that off to a point of when the situation is here, right? With the people you care about, the people that you love, the people that you wanna be there. When it comes to the Eight of Swords, this is actually pretty interesting because sometimes you feel trapped. Sometimes you feel trapped. And every time you try to move backwards, it feels like you get cut up, right? Every time you try to move to the side, it feels like you get cut up. And every time you move forward, you feel yourself walking into these deep emotional waters and you are so scared. It's going to take you back into that emotional ocean that almost drowned you, right? You're worried about that happening. However, you need to know that this is actually just your feelings. Yes, every time you try to go backwards, it hurts because the universe wants you to move forward. But more importantly, every time you try to ignore, ignore things, you feel like you're getting cut up because the universe is saying no more being complacent. You need to know that as you walk forward, even though those waters scare you and you think you might even be going back into depressive waters or places that you just crawled out of, you don't want to go back to. It's not. It's literally the remnants, the shadows, the echoes of things you need to deal with, emotions that you need to kind of internalize. But those emotions really deal with um, pride and shame for 
for for allowing things to happen and not just a lot of times we think about this just in um uh, emotional relationships, but a lot of times this is actually even in our relationships with our siblings, with our close friends, because, you know, we you tend to have echoes in our life, right? So as you move forward, you need to know that these are just puddles you need to work for. As you walk through them, they will not drown you. They are puddles. You can literally move forward in the solid ground when you're in that Taurus energy that you want to be in. Now, there is the sun coming up, right? This is where you're coming from, right? We know that there is the sun. What is the sun? The sun is really, really blessed major arcana. It's when your id, your ego, your super ego all move together as one to move toward your goal, finally in alignment, finally focused. There is a lot of creativity. There is a lot of passion. We see these flowers coming up, right? This is a very prosperous time, but more important, you see the universe, literally that sun on your back saying that you are now focused, you are now whole, I'm going to help you get to your goals. So things are going to start happening very, very quickly in a very, but again, you're going to need that alignment. What is stopping the alignment from coming? We got that five of pentacles and we also have the five of cups. Let me tell you something with the five of pentacles. Again, I don't want you to think that this is just all focused on your old relationship because it actually goes a lot deeper than that. You need to realize that in life, um, and maybe you already realize it, right? We have echoes. Oftentimes when we're being mistreated by one person, the reason why we are drawn to that person or we may be accepted is because there are echoes. There are echoes of the other people in our life that mistreat us, not to that extent, right? They might be the worst manifestation of it, but they all have that same echo. When it comes to the five of pentacles, right? And the five of cups, the five of cups is saying that there are cups that have been knocked over. There are things that have happened that you actually deeply, deeply, truly regret. And the reason you regret is because the things that you care about that were actually knocked over, you feel like you played a big part in. You feel like you take a big part in and you are beside yourself in sadness because if you could have, you would have done things differently because you didn't want those cups to be knocked over, right? So what that is, is you being beside yourself. The thing with the five of cups, and this goes into that world lesson of actually maybe through meditation, maybe through peace, finding peace in the way of like, listen, were you perfect? I mean, probably not. You're human, right? Did you do everything right? Probably not. You're human. Could you have done in your mind? Because I know you're Taurus and I know you go over things over and over in your mind. Could you have done everything right that you that they said they wanted and you think you could have done, right? Every single time you maybe did passive aggressive, every single time you like threw shot. Could you have done everything right? Everything right and still had the same result? Absolutely. Because the thing about the five of cups are, right? The universe is telling you that, yes, at one point there might have been clear water in those cups. Who knows what were in those cups? But at the point where the cups got knocked over, the only thing in the cups were red and green liquid. That red and green liquid is poison. The universe saw you drinking from poison cups. And even though you didn't recognize it, the universe saw that first, okay, She's a strong Taurus. Let her drink from those cups and she'll move on. But you started drinking from those cups and almost loving the taste. And that poison started going inside of you, making you toxic. But then all of a sudden, you are starting to become the toxic person. That's when the universe said, absolutely not, not on my watch. And it knocked those cups over. But still, you mourn beside yourself because in those cups that got knocked over, yes, poison got knocked out. But there were other things in those cups that you actually valued, other things in those cups that you wanted, other things in the way that you behaved surrounding everything that you wish you could that you wish you had done differently, that you wish you had behaved. And this goes into even our close relationships, right? The thing is, the universe wants you to take those cups and go. Now you could, right, wash these cups out, go to the stream and still take all five cups if you want it. But right now the universe is saying there's so many other blessings coming. And we see that when we talk about the sun, there's so many other blessings coming that it doesn't make sense to even take time to wash those cups out because new blessings are coming. And also, again, this goes into with the world and releasing yourself from the shame and guilt that you actually feel um, 
for the things that have transpired. It doesn't matter whether you did everything right or wrong. Maybe you did fall short sometimes. It doesn't matter because these cups were knocked over for, for a reason. And whether you had given everything or nothing at all, it still would have been the same result. Now, how do we move past this energy and actually move into the sun? Because this is what you are dealing with. A, a lot of like, again, I don't want to be like shame, 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 but there's a lot of shame and guilt, but I think it comes into the fact that you are um, a Taurus and you know the way things should be done correctly. I mean, obviously you look you look like a Taurus, perfect hair, perfect makeup, per like you know the way things should be done and you, God damn it, not only are you going to do things the right way, but everybody around you is going to do things the correct way. So when you feel like there was something that you had control of that fell to the wayside or something you had control of that you didn't um, execute correctly. You are felt, you beat yourself up. You, you say, what if, and then when you see the manifestations, you're like, wow, it, you know, it's like your son saying mom could have a cookie. And you're like, no, no cookies until like you finish your homework. And then, you know, a year later, your son's like, I'm so depressed because of only I had gotten that cookie. So you beat yourself up and it's like, maybe I should have given them that cookie because if I did, things would be better. It's time to let it go. Things actually played out as it should have. Now, hold on guys, right? All right, hold on. We're going to wrap this up really quick and then we'll let everybody take questions, okay? Last a couple of things, right? We have the five of uh, pentacles, we have the justice, and we have the ten of uh, cups. I'm sorry, the nine of cups. We need to know that in the nine of cups, Fallon, it's very important right now. You stay around people that have a lot of healthy things, a lot of healthy things to say so you can replenish your cups and really remind yourself who you are and also release yourself from the guilt you might be uh, feeling. A uh, couple of last things, the justice card. Because of the things that transpired and the way when you finally released yourself, there are people that, um, that you feel like don't understand or they didn't really learn their lesson or you feel a lot of anger that people might have taken advantage of you or treated you bad. I want you to know that the universe is in the process of tapping on the shoulder saying, listen, they can handle their own karma. Their own karma is actually coming to them. The only thing you need to do is focus toward moving toward the sun. Resist any temptation to kind of get that extra kick in, to kind of like make people understand how you feel or why they did what's wrong. The universe is soon going to feel their lesson. Karma is being handed out, but in those forms of their life lessons where they're going to actually need to grow. The last thing, and this is the last thing guys, and after that, Found is going to take questions from the crowd. So we'll ask a few questions from the crowd. If you guys even want to call in, maybe if you guys know how to act, but if not, we'll take questions from you guys that Fallon can answer. The last thing I want to say is the five of pentacles. This is actually really healing energy for earth signs. It's saying that you actually need to be a little bit more um, emotionally vulnerable. Now, I know you're an earth sign. You're not going to cry and be like, why, why, why? But emotional vulnerability has to do with, and I give this to all earth signs where it says you need to learn to be a little bit more emotionally vulnerable. It needs to learn to be you clearly communicating what you want to everyone, but in a way that doesn't actually hurt your pride, right? In a way that doesn't actually hurt your pride. One of the ways you might do that, and I say this to a lot of earth signs, is by taking out the fact that you need the person and letting people know what you expect in life. Not saying... Sorry, not <laughs> something just went off. It scared me. Not saying, oh my God, I need you as a friend or I need you to do this, but basically rephrasing things in a way it's like, listen, anybody in my life is going to do A, B, and C. If this is what I expect, any man I'm with, any friend I have, any job I work at is going to give me or do A, B, and C. That's a way of letting people know what you expect of them without saying, oh my God, I, I need you to treat me this way, or I need you to do that, or I need that from you. It's a way of clearly establishing your boundaries while keeping your Taurus sense of pride and respectability. Okay, so that's a quick reading. We'll do the rest of the reading offline improv uh, uh, in private, but I did want to open the time up for, right? I wanted to open the time up for questions. Does anybody have any questions with Fallon or with the reading or what she'd like to do, right? What would you, what would you guys like to ask, right? Any questions for Fallon? Come on guys. Let's see. Let's see. 
<laughs> karma karma said are you sure this isn't a libra reading no here <laughs> we go who would like to ask any questions to fallon let's see let me look through these questions there's a lot here let's see <laughs> someone said my face doesn't look swollen thank you because i really <laughs> feel like i've been like fat <laughs> you know, really Girl, you yes. make pregnancy look good. I was like, get her off Instagram before people are like, I want to have a baby because no one's going to do it. Why do you feel like your face looks puffy? I do. And my lips, they're like completely just taking over my entire face. People, It's to the point where people are DMing me, asking me um, who did my lips. Like, where did I get them done at? <laughs> I was going to say, people pay for those lips. Lucky, lucky you. Oh, so somebody wants to think, do you ever think of writing a memoir? Mm, like it's golden once you know. I, I actually plan on putting it into film. Do you really? Tell us about that. Um, it's still in the works right now um, because my life is still ongoing. I don't okay. have an ending that I'm very comfortable with just yet, but I do plan on writing out my life um, as a film. So are you going to play yourself? No, I thought about it. <laughs> no, think thought, about it though, right? Think love, about it. It can be, love that thing. It can but, be fictionalized, no. you know, based on your, based on your life. Right. Yeah. No, I won't play myself, but yeah, I definitely I'm 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 not much of a reader because I am ADHD. Um, okay. So it, reading was just not my strong suit. So I don't want to connect with any audience in a way that I don't necessarily I'm, I'm not ex necessarily as strong in. Oh, so okay. I want to be very true to who I am and how I connect. Um, and that's through film. I love that. I love that. Somebody wants to know, why does Fallon look so uninterested? You guys, can somebody explain this? Fallon, you explain it. People have different listening faces. That is Fallon's listening face. She is, a tourist. she is a tourist queen to our heart. That's the way she listens. Can you guys please that accept that other true. people are differently? That is very true, Tisa. I'm a very like, when I'm listening, I'm very like, <laughs> either that or I'm doing this or I'm lifting an eyebrow. Exactly. People always, people always point these things out. I'm either very blank faced or I'm like uplifted or I'm lifting an eyebrow. Like there's something about my face. It, it, yeah, that's just how I listen, guys. Sorry. Listen, you guys, welcome to Earth Kingdom Energy. This day, still waters, right? Still Waters Run Deep was made for Earth Energy. So you guys, just please accept that everybody's different, okay? Oh, Everyone's Fallon, different. here's a note. Listen, do you feel like the reading was on point? Oh, absolutely. 100%. I, I take a lot of, um, I, I take in a lot of guilt. Even <laughs> you guys can sit in here and I'll tell you the whole scenario of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, of whatever we may be t discussing. And you will find all of the faults within the scenario of someone else. And I will find all of the faults within myself and not point out any faults in anyone else, because that's just not who I am. I'm, I'm, I am my uh, biggest critic. And so I never point the finger at anyone else. I always point the finger at myself because I love taking responsibility for the things that I do. Um, which has been the hardest part, I think, about um, having this this uh, life lesson so public. Um, I was trying to learn a life lesson at the same time of trying to be a mother and a head of household, mm -hmm. and at the same time of trying to heal and grow from it all and trying to understand, you know, my part in it, what part I didn't play in it, because when you're with... Um, a person who um, exhibits a certain behavior, you end mm -hmm. up, me, the type of personality I have, I end up taking on all of the responsibility naturally and harboring it and saying, this is what you could have done better. You should have done this. You should have said this. And I started beating myself up 
mm-hmm. about everything. And then with everybody else's input into it, it was really hard. It was, it was a big life lesson. As you said, it was, it was a huge life lesson for me. Um, and actually this all allowed me to learn how to, um, give myself grace. Yeah. And to really, to really back off. <laughs> what do you and mean by no, back off? Back off meaning um, not be so hard on myself um, and really understanding that there was nothing I could have said or done to um, prevent the situation or to make anyone feel even more at ease. And I'm not even talking about my ex. I'm, I'm mm. more so talking about um, my fans and my viewers, people who truly, you know, as they say, believed in me and things like that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I could have done because I am who I am. Yeah. And I'm learning as I go. And that's that's as honest and as real as I can get. Um, I'm not going to be perfect for everyone. And I, I had to learn how to bite that bullet. Mm. And just take Take life for what it is. Wow, that's really, really deep. That's really deep. I mean, it sounds like you're an empath just from hearing me talk about that. Um, it sounds like you are a bit of an empath. And usually with empath, you guys definitely attract people that are like, yeah, it's your fault. You know, empath is like, it's all my fault. And they're just like, yeah, it's it's <laughs> definitely your fault. You know, <laughs> you didn't even know. Please. You know, you're like, I wasn't even born. And they're like, it's your fault. You know, here's a good question, right? Um, this is really good. Althea Jung, are you happy? <laughs> I am the happiest I have ever been in my life. And I think I'm the happiest right now, mm-hmm. not because of a man, not because of my motherhood or anything of that. I, I think I'm happiest right now because I have finally accepted myself and who I am and not what society expects of me or who I should be for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, who I should be with because it looks better to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I am I am happy because I accept me for me and who God created me to be. And I'm only I'm only continuing to learning more and more about me each day like literally every day there's something new and i'm like oh (laughs) that's a beautiful beautiful thing so when you say that you're finally like you feel free now i would imagine it's because like you said the things you wanted to do and the growth you had you had it on a national stage so now there's nothing else to hide there's you know you are standing there and you've of course have found the love and support of the people that love you, but more importantly, you've just finally accepted yourself. Um, what Were there ever any times that you just felt like saying, you know what, I'm just gonna go and disappear, I'm gonna do this, I know that. From what I saw from the outside looking in, there was one person in particular, but a lot of people, you know, were using you as, you know, Hester Pring from the Scarlet Letter, you know, like shame, 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 and all the misogyny and distrust and, you know, patriarchal ways, misogynistic ways, people think they were just projecting on you. Was there any time that you were just like, enough of this? I am, I'll give you your wish, I'll just disappear. Oh, absolutely. It was when you guys saw me disappear. When um, when everything, my divorce came out and it was public and um, I had posted just one simple thing and that was on my Instagram. And that was, I'm, I'm just trying to focus on healing mm-hmm. and finalizing my divorce. I said those words because it was true. And I also said those, I chose to say those words um, because that's all I could really get out. Yeah. I, I couldn't fit anything else inside of me or outside of me. So you guys didn't see me, excuse me, you guys didn't see me for a couple of months because um, I just, I really felt like the only thing I can do is shut down because it's a man's word against a woman's and mm. who wants to hear a woman, you know, who believes a woman? No yeah. one ever. 
no one ever believes what women say. It's always yeah. what a man says, and it's not just a man, it's a wealthy man. Mm. So who ever allegedly, 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 guys. Right. <laughs> right. So who would ever believe anything that I have to say? Yeah. You know, so it it just got to a point where, you know, yeah, I did shut down. Mm, well, we're glad to see that uh, you found your way out of it. Really inspirational for people. You know, so let's see. Let's get through a few of these questions. Do you want a boy or a girl? Let's lighten up. Do you want a boy or a girl? What do you feel? Um, I definitely, definitely want a girl. Um, this Friday, we will be announcing the um, gender. We will be showing the gender reveal this Friday on our YouTube channel. So, yay! Nice, nice, nice. nice. So Do you have to finally know what it is? I want a girl. Jalen wants a girl. All Aww. the boys want a girl. Um, it was really hectic telling announce it because this friday spoiler alert we will be announcing it to the children um, oh it wow was really are they gonna be in the video with the yeah, announcement in oh, there we'll cool. be in there it was really nerve-wracking telling nice them. so i hope you guys tune in oh my god i can't wait so listen Light Mission wants to know, this is a good question what's your strongest psychic gift are you clairvoyant clerial audience etc you know what? It's funny. Hmm. <laughs> I have actually been asked this several times and um, I am ignorant even still to it. I still don't know myself well enough to be able to answer that. However, who said that? Who even knows? How did you know I was intuitive? That was so light mission. New. Light mission twenty three new. I guess you do okay. have an aura about you, and people that are into light work, they can always sense that aura. So that's very interesting. Yes, light mission. Okay, I am very intuitive. Um, I don't know necessarily what I am. Um, mm -hmm. I see things. I don't necessarily. I can when I meditate. I can see certain things. Um, in front of me as if someone was standing in front of me. I don't know. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? And when you're meditating, are you looking for guidance or is it just like, it just yeah. comes to you like you start seeing? Huh. I slowly look for guidance. However, whenever I meditate, I, I tap into a whole other realm. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> How long have you been meditating? Um, for about three years now. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. See, thank you, Light Mission. Okay, so we learned a little. Oh, here's one from Leah, Angel Hillings. What surprised you about the reading? Um, nothing really. It, it, it was, what was really more so surprising, it's always funny to me, is when people can see my deepest insecurities. Okay. Because I hide them, or I feel as though I hide them very well. And so whenever I get a reading, whenever they're capable of seeing my insecurities, I don't like it. <laughs> oh, okay. So, we'll move on to that. That's, I always say Taurus and Scorpios, they'll be the ones, even with readings, what can I help you with? I don't know. You tell me, you know? And then they're just yeah. like, you know, let's move on. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. No, it's like, not a bad thing. It's not a bad insecurity. I just no, I know that a bad insecurity, but there is something about Taurus and Scorpios. You guys don't like feeling exposed, you know? You reveal when you want, you know? You reveal when you want. So, you know, but I always say Taurus and Scorpios too. You can have 20 kids with them, the perfect life, super happy, and you sit down for breakfast and you say, my love, would you like a, a, a cup of coffee? And you guys will look at them and be like, did they poison my coffee? And then be like, nah, okay, I'll have a sip. You know, there's just a little thought in your head, like, hmm, okay, right? <laughs> yeah. RK Collection, thank you so much. Okay, so, ooh, here's a good one. Um, okay, so Mystical doesn't have a question, but she wanted to tell you to keep up the good work, positivity, and much love and support over here. I will say, you know, I am new to these YouTube streets and I always knew that there were paid trolls and, you know, spam accounts and this and that. 
But I definitely noticed after we had our interview, you know, there will be somebody writing books about how you need to be, you know, put on a cross and set a fire. And there's all these troll accounts. There's all these paid accounts. I do notice that the people that actually are real people and they're real accounts, not paid trolls, they definitely, you definitely have their support. It's amazing how much real support you actually have. So that's, I mean, it's a good thing to see that people actually have some sense and they can get behind somebody with good energy. Oh, right. Phelan, this is a good one. Um, what, wait, but before we go, have you had a lot of trouble with like troll farms and spam? Like, how do you deal with that? Or are you just like block, block, block? I'm not going through this. My followers, if you ever notice my followers going down on Instagram, it's because I'm blocking people. <laughs> oh, really? But Oh yeah. I love yeah. my block button. I don't care how many followers I, I started out. <laughs> I started out spreading the word and whatever came to my spirit with just 11 viewers in in my um in my instagram lives i could give a damn honestly about what my followers are what my what my um what my um verification status is i really mm -hmm. don't care um i care about helping others and that's what i was put on this earth for um i was put on this earth to be a light worker and yeah as long as I'm fulfilling that mission, then I feel, I feel at peace and I feel whole. So That's when beautiful. it comes to negativity, just as much as I block it out in my real life, I'm going to block it out when they have Twitter fingers. Mm. Okay. That's, that's a great way to go. Phelan, what zodiac sign do you think your baby's going to be? <laughs> I know a zodiac sign my baby's coming. Oh, be. okay. Ooh, Miss Innabug, that was a good one. I didn't even see that one coming. Okay, I didn't see that one coming. Damn it. She's too quick for us. Okay. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Phelan, have you ever thought about going back to modeling? Mm, no. I I feel like I I know y'all don't think it. I feel like I'm too old. I Why? I am just too old. <laughs> you think so? Because now there's that market. You look like you're 16. There's that market to be like, I love oil LA regenerate serum. Look, no lines, you know? You're like that perfect age to start doing doing stuff for you know how they have 16 year olds doing anti-aging stuff. You're the best thing because you have you're like what? You what just turned 29, 30 and you don't have any wrinkle. I don't know. I think I can see there's a marker for modeling. Would you consider yeah. if an agent contacted you, any agents or anybody that knows, would you consider if a legitimate agent contacted you getting back into modeling? Mm -hmm. I, I would consider it. I would okay. Consider. Okay. So let's see. This is a good one because for those of you guys who don't know, Fallon is an amazingly talented artist, right? She's always posting her work. It actually is gorgeous. Would you ever consider doing a full painting tutorial um, on, uh, you, on YouTube? That would actually be something really, really cool. Or just taking us through like the process of you creating and just putting a little bit like every day. So we kind of see like, you know, the creative process. Uh, you know what? It takes approximately um, 16 to 24 hours for me to paint um, mm -hmm. an actual piece. So no, not like live or anything like that. However, okay. the process of it, yes, absolutely. I've gone live a couple of times on Instagram just showing what it is that I use and what I do. Yeah. Um, but that, that was back when, when I first started. Um, however, yeah, I just recently started a new piece and I haven't painted anything in almost a year. Um, really? That was going on. I just, I don't paint when I'm upset. I only okay. paint when I'm at my happiest. So That's it's beautiful thing. Ever posting what I'm currently working on. It's because I'm at my happiest point. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the piece that I'm working on right now it's going to take me a few weeks, but because uh, it's the biggest one I've ever done. Um, and it's the first one that I've done since my divorce. Um, so I love that. That's so, yeah. a beautiful thing that you don't want to. I never thought about that. Memorialize negative feelings, you know, in a painting and have that energy around you. That's beautiful that you're actually. Anyone, 
I wouldn't want anyone to purchase when I do begin to sell my paintings. I'm not selling them currently right now, but when I do begin to sell them, I wouldn't want anybody to take my negative energy and put it in their home on display. You know, yeah. that's, uh, that's toxic. I wouldn't want that. So no, I only paint when I am happy. I love that. So, so, uh, so Sean wants you to know that Fallon, you're beautiful and you're handling yourself with class and grace. Uh, don't do others are doing and try too hard. I don't think that she's been talking to a Taurus queen. Taurus is never try too hard. They always hit that mark just perfect. You're never going to see a Taurus sweat. So this is good, Ebba. right? Ebba. <laughs> yes. Ever, ever, ever. So we have time for one more question. Let's see if we get a good one. So is there anything in the meantime you want us to know why I'm looking for the last question? You guys don't embarrass me. Let's pull up a good question. But is there anything else you want us to know? Definitely you're doing, you guys, stay tuned for Fallon's channel on Friday. She is doing a gender reveal and all the kids are going to be there. Her channel is so amazing. Really, really beautiful energy on her channel. It's actually pretty funny too. You and Jalen have great chemistry and the boys are so hilarious. So. You mentioned you in there. Do you see it? I, I saw you guys doing that. Pity and they make you want to marry me. Pity and they make you want to marry me. Yes, I saw the whole family doing that. I was like, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> 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 they want to marry me, right? So here's the thing. The last thing, Fallon, you know, there's lots of things cards can predict and energy. What do you hope to actually manifest in the next year? Let's speak it into existence. What do you hope to manifest in that? Not for, I'm not talking about, don't tell me world peace. Don't tell me everybody to be happy. We don't, we're not talking about that right now. We know you want the world to be great. But for yourself, what do you hope to manifest in the next year? Mm. I want to be an actor again. I started acting when I was nine and um, in theater. Nice. Um, yeah. And so I, after that, and when I lived, when I moved to LA, when I was, oh God, how old was I? I think I was 21 when I moved wow. to LA. Yeah. Um, I pursued my acting career where I learned Taekwondo and I, really fell in love with um action packed acting so oh, wow. oh that's what i'm looking to get back into i wasn't allowed in my last in my last um relationship i wasn't allowed to act because they never wanted me away from the home or the children so i really just stopped living for me and now that i'm back into me again I'm really looking into just getting an agent and just, yeah, seeing what works for me. That's beautiful. We're going to speak it into existence and see you on the screens acting. That's amazing. You actually know Taekwondo. We did just literally get the last question, right? Somebody wants to know, uh, Sheila in Virginia wants to know, does Simon's breath stink? Huh? Does Simon's breath stink? <laughs> <laughs> what? Taylor, oh let me do with Andy Cohen. Um, I mean, it has a version of it. Sheila in Virginia would like to know: Does Simon's breath stink? <laughs> <laughs> Simon constantly smells like cigars and tequila. <laughs> I told y'all. Okay, say no more. If you have ever been around a man that smokes and drinks a lot, yeah. you already know the answer to that. Yeah. Okay, he wears good cologne. He wears good cologne. <laughs> However, he drinks and smokes a lot more. So, well, there you have it, Valid. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate. It. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to read you and read you on live. Many blessings to you. We know you're going to get that acting off the ground. But in the meantime, you guys, if you guys are here, you already know Fallon has a YouTube channel. She's doing the gender reveal this Friday. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, show this woman some support. It literally, literally, we need more light in this world. And we're going to wait for the painting tutorial. Okay, Fallon? <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you so much, Roma. And I'll let you go and actually get some sleep. I don't know how you do it with a baby looking beautiful with the boys. And I, I would be curled up on this couch like a cat. Yes, I don't know how you do it, but you make it look easy. Jalen, <laughs> Jalen is how I do it. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Fallon. Have thank a great you. night. Good night, okay. guys. Mm, bye bye. All right, you guys. So that was Fallon sending lots of love and light. She has such great energy, don't you think? And I'm not just saying that because she came on my channel. I thought she had great energy even before she popped up. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining the live. We did the reading with Fallon. If you are joining late, I'm going to drop some, uh, what do you call it? I'm going to drop some uh, timestamps in the thing. And also, if you guys want your own reading from me, you can get it. Let's pray on that person. Let's send some good energy out to whoever's in that ambulance, right? Um, but you guys, also if you guys want any private readings, I do private readings and I am on every Monday and Thursday and I do tarot reading come rain or shine every Monday and Thursday. I take donations, but I also do it free sometimes too because you know, let's give love, spread light and shine that light. All right, do you guys, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, you guys, I have to go. I will talk to you guys later and thank you so much for joining. Uh, what is it? Timestamps are going to be in the playback. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Bye.